gone in there, and it's certainly going to be worth your while. Um, but now. Um, I'm going to introduce you to Inder Punaji from Nestle. He is the um, head of sustainability within Nestle for the UK and Ireland, and he's going to give us um, Nestle's perspective on sustainability. Okay, right. Thank you. You walk away there. Yeah. Okay, um, so sort of good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Firstly, just want to say thank you to Future in the Food, Ronan, and the sponsors for their invitation. And really, I, I think this, the presentations I heard were quite insightful this morning. And I'm going to take a sort of a few moments and go through the Nestle strategy and the approach we have taken in terms of sustainability, and hopefully give you a contextual. Uh, approach and the framework we are taking. Now, before I begin, I just wanted to sort of, uh, uh, last week was the Indian New Year, and the Indian New Year works on a lunar calendar, and it's, it's been celebrated for the last three and a half, four thousand years. And the importance of the Indian New Year is we talk about going from darkness to light. So how do we get new light onto us? How do we move from darkness to light? And like sort of most Indian cultures, we have a lot of respect for, we don't call them old people, we call them wise people. And there's a lot of respect for people who've been there, seen it. And, and sometimes we refer to them as gurus. And the word guru is really quite important. It, a guru literally means someone who leads you from darkness to light. And in the last five years, I think, in the sustainability journey, that's what's happening. And I was trying to sort of framework this, how does this work for me in my job? And the way I look at it, if there's a burning platform, there's three options you have. The first option is you can turn your back and you get burnt. The second one is you can take the heat and be very reactive. And the third option is you can take the light from the burning platform and take it as an opportunity to do, to do something beautiful or wonderful. And that's what sustainability allows you to do. It allows you to do some beautiful things. It allows you to do things which are ingrained in our, not just work self, but also in your spiritual self. There's something about sustainability that goes beyond work, that goes beyond the family, you suddenly become custodians of a major planet. You playing a part, your role in this. So if each of us today was a guru, so, and we only did 1% of whatever you wanted to do in sustainability, there's about 150 of you here, that's quite a bright light. So you only, you know, so take the opportunity to do something. You can wait, you know, like I said, you can turn your back and get burnt, but I think most of you are already convinced it's the right thing to do. But it's just taking that courageous step and doing it. And sometimes you take a lot of flack in doing what you're doing. In my job, it's a challenge every day. It's not an easy sell. But when it comes right, it's fantastic. When it goes wrong, you take the responsibility. So it's not always going to happen, but at least you go on the path of righteousness or the path of light. So I just wanted to share that with you because last week I was trying to explain to my kids why I do sustainability and why I'm always trying to sort of do everything at home, at work, or in everything else I'm trying to do. So just going back to what Nestle and just a bit about Nestle. So Nestle is a company that was founded in 1866. Uh, it has about 2.2 billion worth of sales every year. That's Swiss francs. 450,000 people in over 150 countries. We have about 460, 470 factories in 86 countries. And the most important thing, we have 34 research and development centers. And that's really quite key to one of the successes of Nestle. It's the amount of research that goes in. And there's about 2,000 brands, and this is the most, there's 1 billion Nestle products sold every day. 
So somewhere, somewhere, someone is having a coffee or a confectionery or eating some Nestle product. So, so the scale of it is quite immense, and with scale comes uh, responsibility. So what is it that we're facing? What are the challenges we're facing? And I think some people have already alluded to this, but the key to uh, the challenges we're facing are both social, economic, and environmental. And we know that climate change is having a major effect on us. We know population, demand, obesity, economic recession, which has hit most countries, commodity prices. And the most interesting one of all is the consumer and citizen. And they are quite distinct. They're not the same. You can be the same, but they are quite distinct. And everything we do is, firstly, has to be of the right quality, has to taste right, and has to be trusted. And if you can get those three things right, then your products will sell. And it's really important the way we do that. So how do we then embed sustainability within this? And they say, I, one thing I'm really pleased about, we have a methodology. We have a set of principles we always go back to. If you're not sure, we go back to this. And this is the creating shared value triangle. And the triangle is really quite simple. The first line at the base is compliance. So you don't even jump onto sustainability until you've met your compliance needs. So you, first and foremost is meet all your compliance requirements. Secondly, then you move on to the sustainability agenda. And the sustainability agenda is quite wide. And I'll, I'll explain some examples in the next few minutes, uh, the, the kind of areas we get involved with. But sustainability is, is quite a, it, it ranges from social activities to environmental activities to economic activities. A lot of people have got hung up. It's just about environment. It's not the environment. It's about society. And it's about the planet. So. If you're already looking at it from an environmental lens, you're going to miss out and something's going to catch you out later on. So sustainability is much wider than you think it is. And we're, we're in our approach to sustainability, at a site level, which I'll take you, we have a six-pillar approach, which I'll explain. But each has to be done and has to have the same amount of energy. You, you just can't do one thing and negate another thing. And it's not an offset. And then si finally, within this creating shared value, we have three things we focus around the world. And the things are nutrition, water, rural development. And the simple reason why we focus on that is, one, without nature, our business doesn't exist. And it's a simple truth. It's not complicated. I don't have to go into lots of things. If nature doesn't exist, or we degrade nature, we as a business don't exist. But nature can exist without us. So it's really important that nature is at the heart of everything. And all the issues we see in nature, we see it firsthand. We have over 700 farmers and agriculturists out there. We see it in the first instance. We don't have to look at charts and tables. You know if there's no water. You know if there's a drought. You know if there's deforestation. You don't need lots of scientific data to see the obvious. And sometimes I think we hide ourselves in data and wait for another set of data to, do some, to take some action. So it's really important that you do have your eyes open when you look at sustainability. And it's not difficult. It really is not difficult. It's really easy to see sometimes, but it's hard to do. So, have, so the focus we do have is looking at these three things. And we know with water, uh, a large there's about 86 of our factories, which are, if you look at water risk, are based in high water risk area. We know if we don't do something about water and we don't work in collaboration with others, we're not going to have products to deliver. Now, it's not just here, it's everywhere. Uh, in, the, in the UK recently, we did some work on climate adaptation and in Ireland. And we found lots of actions we have to take. 
So, you know, don't be fooled by thinking it's, it's going it's to happen somewhere else. It's going to happen on your doorstep. Climate change it doesn't sort of select. It will happen. The consequences are everywhere. I mean, yesterday I was talking to someone. One of the sustainability impacts of flying things over is people live on, under flight paths. So your products might fly somewhere, but they fly over someone's house somewhere. And the impact of that flight path is that stress levels are greater if you live under a flight path than if you don't. So the impacts are everywhere. And it's just discovering where they are as well. So when I say they're everywhere, and that's the kind of responsibility you have to take on. So it's a very much a holistic approach. So where are we and how do we deal with these things? So we have the creating shared value. And in simple terms, creating shared value, it, I'll put it in a sentence. It's, it allows us to make money. And it allows us to do good for society. And the important word is and. So you create value for your shareholders and create value for society. So you can do both. It's not all. And that's really important as well. Um, when I talk to people, it's, they, they normally say, I've got to do one or the other. But you can do both. So let's give you an example of a value chain and how we work with it. So this is the coffee value chain. So coffee is probably one of our key products. Uh, at some time, somewhere, someone would have drunk our coffee. And coffee is, it, it's, uh, it's, it's everywhere in the world now. So I, I come from Kenya. And coffee, you know, I remember there used to be one coffee shop in the town at one time. I went recently, there's coffee shops everywhere. And you walk down any high street, you'll see lots of coffee shops. So suddenly it's a, it's a commodity that's just, really taken off. And our approach here is, how do we make it sustainable? How do we keep ensuring that you can get great coffee when you want it? And this has meant working along the whole supply chain, rather than just focusing on one area. And the key here has been that responsible farming is at the essence of it. So we know that if farmers don't have a livelihood, in coffee plantations, they're not going to, they're not going to, that coffee is not going to be there. We know that if we don't look after the plants and we don't nurture the plants, we don't look after the environment there, those, uh, we're not going to have coffee plants there. We know that if we don't look after the people and the societies at large there, that coffee is not going to be there. So suddenly you have a lot of responsibility. And in Colombia especially, we've done a lot of work there. And one of the biggest uh, disease that's affecting coffee plants right now is rust leaf. Some of you might have heard of it. So we're now having trying. We have to replace these plants, and we're doing it through sort of giving away the new batches of plants we've got. So we're, I think by the end of next year, we'll have done about 12 million plant giveaways in that area, and we've got about 220 million to do by 2020. And the responsible production side of it is where the coffee is produced. Now, the coffee, uh, I'm just going to talk about the UK, is produced in two, two sites. One is Tutbury, and one is in, in the UK, and one is Dalston. And at the, at the production site, we look at what we need to do there. So we've done the usual stuff of zero waste to landfill. We try to use our resource efficiency to reduce uh, our energy needs, 20% of all our site energy comes from coffee grounds. Um, we've reduced our packaging, um, you know, designed. One of the key mantras I'm going out with right now is uh, design, in design in sustainability, design out waste. So do it at the design stage. Don't react afterwards. So when I was talking about see the light, if you do it early on, you can really think about the consequences and bring in people from the outside don't think you can do it on your own. Bring in your suppliers. Bring in whoever wants to say on it and collaborate and see what you can get out. So this, you know, so there's a lot of work we're doing in that area. And we're doing a lot of platforms where we're bringing our suppliers in and saying, what is it we can do better? Rather than telling them what they can do better, ask the question, what is it we can do better? Where is it we're not doing right? 
And it's amazing the answers are out there. And the last bit really is responsible consumption. And the key thing about responsible consumption is that customers uh, and all the studies show customers do two things. One, when you ask them a the question, are you really, do you really care about the environment? Who says no? Because it's a loaded question. But when you get them to purchase the product, they'll buy it on value. They'll buy it on price. So it's called a, it's called a green gap between what you say and what you do. They're two different things. And what, we're, what every study will show you is that the customer expects you to do it, expects you to have sorted out sustainability, not for them to do it at a premium cost. So if you think you're going to, you know, we're, we're doing branded goods and we're learning more and more of that, there's an expectation that you will all do it. Why should I do it when I'm purchasing your products? You're the one who's producing it or you're the one who's making it. You get it right. And that is a key message I'll take out to you. You can do all the research you want and you'll find the same answer. So you're all customers. You, when you go out to shop, first you look at value, how much it's going to cost. You, then you look at the trust side of it. And maybe some of you might think about the environmental side of it. You might purchase an environmental. Most customers will not do that. So it's, it's expected that it's, in, it's already within the product. The environment has been sorted out. So on Coco, we do something very similar. I'm not going to go through the whole story, but uh, just I gave the example. I'm giving the example of a Kit Kat here. Kit Kat is one of our major brands. The Kit Kat in the UK, 70% um, of the Kit Kat is locally sourced which comes as a shock to a lot of people, in that all the milk comes from a set of farmers in Scotland, and all the wheat is locally sourced as well. It's only the cocoa and a few ingredients that come from outside. So all, uh, companies like us, a lot of that, we depend on local farmers, local producers to do a lot of uh, the commodities for us. We've, I've given this example is we're trying to get to communicate to customers and this is a QIR code we've put on the back of the KitKat and basically you can get all the data and information you want about that KitKat from pressing on that QR code and that's going more and more on our products. So rather than putting more labels on, we're trying to give this information in sort of a more savvy way. And at our sites, what do we look at? We have sort of sustainability pillars, energy, water, waste. We look at value chains, we look at biodiversity, and most importantly, I think, community and people. So it's a much more landscape approach rather than a very operational approach. So we're doing work in Buxton right now. Uh, I'm doing some work out there, and, the, and, and we're saying, how do we approach the citizen? The citizen might not buy your product, but they do care about the environment they live in and the landscape li they live in. And Climate change is also dependent on landscape. So you have to look at it at a very much a landscape level. Okay. In, terms, in terms of our um, uh, approach to resource efficiency, re resource efficiency is the easiest one to do out of all of them because there's a simple cost attached to it. So if anyone's saying that they're finding this difficult, then you've either got very cheap energy or you're not looking hard enough. <coughs> So resource efficiency is one we've, we've done a lot of work in. And there's a lot of money to be saved here. And we have decoupled our energy and water from our volume growth. What we haven't done yet is decouple our waste. Um, that's all waste from volume. And that's the tough one, to go after waste. So waste includes time, resources, material and everything else. So that's been a biggest challenge of all. So if there's any good suppliers out there who want to talk to me about waste reduction in supplies, I'm more than happy to talk to you. So we are now plateauing on our energy, we're plateauing on our water, but that's because we've done all the easy wins and now we're going for the more difficult ones, which means that it's either big capex projects or big capital projects. But a recent study we did shows that there's still a lot of incremental gains to be, get, to be got yet. And in particular, getting employees engaged with the whole process. That's a big challenge for us. How do you get an operator to be really engaged in this? 
and uh, it's still something work. We you know we've got the lean and everything else, but can you get operators to really buy into this and make that change? And that's a cultural shift you need in order to get those next plateaus down. The future looks like this. Uh, it's going to be more. It's going to be much more circular. And I think we've all talked about circular economies. In that, we're going to have to understand where all the hotspots are and deal with hotspots, rather than trying to do everything everywhere. It, it's understand. And the graph I've got up there is an LCA on a farm, and that's our latest project. So we're going on farms, and we're doing. Uh, hot spotting on farms. And one of the key findings we find on farm, remember I talked to you about holistic uh, findings. So if, I, if we had the chance, I would put up, I would, get, I would get you to guess what our key area of activity on farms right now is. And the key activity on our farms is how do we get succession planning in? Nearly every farmer we speak to is 55, 60. How are they going to replace? How are we going to get that succession planning in? It's a big worry for us uh, to, to, get, uh, to maintain that sustainable thing. So these studies are showing us all kinds of different things. I mean, we'll do the energy water waste. We'll do all of that, the animal welfare. But that's a social issue which we need to address as well. Um, so that's the future there. I, and, and I really wanted to sort of end up with um, sort of a saying which, uh, you know, it, it, sustainability is not easy. It's really tough. It's a battle every day. You don't get it your way most of the time, but when you do, it's great. We've had some great work in Ireland. Brian Sheel is here from our uh, Askeaton in Ireland. They started on that journey, and they started doing a lot of great things here. And one of the great things they did, I mean, last year we spoke about biodiversity. They've already planted one acre of butterfly meadows, which is something I'm passionate about. But it just shows that they've involved the community within that. And you can do simple things straight away. You don't have to wait for a long time to do it. And if you do get it right, it hits the, you, you can get returns for your shareholders, and you can get returns for society. And my message really is really simple, is that we are living in extraordinary times in terms of sustainability. This is the generation that will change or decide what happens to the future generation. And all of you here have a part to play. And if you play your part, you play that 1%, you just do that 1%, you'll make a difference. If you're just being very reactive and not being proactive, then nothing will change. And we've seen that with carbon. So you do, we do need to... to uh, to, to things, and I just want to, my last sentence really is, uh, Gandhi, Gandhi, once, Gandhi said that there's enough, there's enough here for our need, but not for our greed. And, and that is a true statement. We need to look at needs in that respect. And the other thing he said, that if you want to see change in the world, you have to start it. Don't rely on others to start the change for you. You, you have to be, you have to destiny the change you want to see. So I've mixed my messages up with lots of things, but if there's anything else you need to say? No, I think, thank you very much indeed. And I think you're going to hang on for a few questions just yeah. standing up there. So just, um, Ender has to, has to catch a, a plane off the island.